the main man from N26. Thank you. So, good evening, everyone. Good to be back in London. Uh, uh, start with starting with my talk, designing a bank 101. So, just a quick question before that: How many of you have heard about N26 before? So, a lot of you. Has anyone used the product? Oh, some of you. So, are you the people who've been to Germany and then moved back to the UK? Uh, are you using Revolut or Mons or something like that here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. See you on the other side. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, my name is Akash. Uh, our offices are based in Berlin, so that's where I work at. Uh, flew in uh, yesterday evening actually uh, to give a talk at Google, and now here at the campus as well. Excited to talk to all of you. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, the the way I've structured the talk format is I keep it short, like around 20 minutes, just to talk through uh, the product, what we have right now, how we design the product, what goes in making the N26. Uh, banking experience and then I really want to open it up for you guys to ask questions uh, if you guys have any questions uh, okay so let's begin uh, most banking experience I'm sure a lot of you everyone in this room has at least one bank account and for many many years most of the banking experiences have looked like this so this is the Deutsche Bank interface uh, super clunky super old school uh, I mean I'm very surprised that in 2017 even they cannot have an app which works in English uh, I've, I've been living in uh, Germany since 2015 and when I moved there and I was this is the first thing this was my first touch point with their banking experience and I was always blown away by this that how can such a huge organization cannot localize their app in two different languages and uh, this really got me thinking about why can't they do it and it's purely a matter of legacy systems their uh, computer systems or whatever their architecture behind the scenes is so old school that it just takes them so long to uh, to build anything new uh, so th these are most of the current banking experiences also this kind of an experience that you actually have to go to a Deutsche Bank or any bank branch between 9 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the evening on a work day to get any work done. You, you cannot open a bank account, you cannot, I don't know, do a, do a transaction which, is, uh, which requires a certain amount of money. It still requires you to go and talk to a bank teller. And then when you go there, they hand you this lovely big thick book which says how to, uh, whatever it says, basic information on securities and investments. And I don't think I've ever even read this book. And once they do that, they start sending you these letters month after month. <laughs> uh, and these never stop coming. I think after six months or so being in Germany, uh, this is the pile of letters which I stopped opening up and I and I literally uh, emailed them saying that please stop and they did not and I still get these letters and that pile is stacking up uh, and which is basically nothing that there are my transactions like every single transaction I do if or used to do with my Deutsche Bank card they used to send me a letter for that and every monthly uh, a, a transaction list everything they used to send me by letters and it was such a ridiculous experience that why are you wasting so much paper and sending me letters when I don't even open them. Uh, and then, in early 2015, uh, the founders of N26 launched the product, which was a very simple, a very basic uh, current account and a MasterCard, but with a very, very slick uh, user experience. And that's when I first, and when I moved to Germany in 2015, I, I first heard about them. I used the product. I signed up for it, and and I really liked the experience, uh, how they managed to. To, to, to get get users online and and provide this banking experience uh, so this is a, a screenshot from back in 2015 how the app experience looked like how the cards looked like back then uh, one interesting story uh, from from 2015 is when when they actually launched the bank they were just the front end piggybacking on a Munich based bank called Wirecard they actually did not have a banking license it was really uh, just seeing a, a product market fit that if we launch a challenger bank as many people call them would people use it? And then within one year, they managed to reach 100,000 customers all across Germany and Austria, which was a real success, like 100,000 people trusting a new startup with their money, with their finances, with really using them as the salary accounts or the main accounts for doing all their transactions. Uh, and uh, fast forward a couple of more months in uh, summer of 2016, they actually managed to acquire a banking license from the German government, uh, which allowed them to scale the bank all over Europe. So currently we're active in 17 European countries. So one bank account and you can travel all across Europe. You have uh, one of the best banking experience in Europe. Uh, 
one of the learnings that we had after going through all of uh, initial after launching the product initially and uh, reaching this, this this success metric that user experience does matter even when it comes down to uh, something like a bank uh, when you really talk about bank people don't really it's something which is there everyone has to do it you, you don't actively talk about it you will not find yourself talking about a, your bank in a bar uh, talking to your friends but this is the kind of experience that we've managed to create with N26, that people do actually talk about our bank experience, our MasterCards, uh, our user interfaces when, when they're talking with friends. Uh, and that's also one of our biggest growth drivers, uh, how, we, uh, how we acquire new customers using the product uh, and how the product looks like. So small things like having a very nice login screen, which we change every couple of months, mostly based on season right now. So this, was, this is our summer login screen, which is live at this moment. Uh, before this, this was our login screen, how, how it looked like. So these, these small moments of delight, uh, using cinema graphs when people are logging into the app, it, it's really nice and we have people writing us, uh, tweeting at us, writing emails to us that they really like this experience. Uh, we've, tr we've experimented with different formats, uh, like localizing it based on different countries. So in Spain or in Italy, for example, or in France showing different uh, monuments or different landscapes or landmarks from those particular cities. Uh, currently we're going with this one which is uh, one of the most successful I would say uh, based on the data that we get. Uh, and then uh, really small experiences like uh, if you, for example, lose your MasterCard, you're able to actually lock and unlock the card from within the app. Now, this is one of the most loved features and, uh, f in, in our product that no other banks in Germany or in Europe were able to provide that. Somebody actually had to call uh, a customer service person or write them an email and then they would respond and then it would take 24 hours to lock the card. Uh, and especially when you're abroad and traveling and you lose your card, what do you do? Uh, and, and this a very, very simple, basic uh, interaction like that. And you can even unlock it. For example, if sometimes you misplace your card even in your own home, you can unlock it. And then if you find it, you can unlock it again. And same thing with reordering. You just like one tap and then the card ships to you in two days. You have another card. Uh, the, these small basic feature sets is what people really like about the product. And then we realize that it's not so hard to, to think and build a bank. Because if, if you start thinking about, oh, we will build a bank from scratch today, it's, it's a very overwhelming experience that how do you build a bank but it's just understanding the customer needs at the very basic level that you need a MasterCard you need to be able to lock it you need to be able to reorder it you need to be able to control how the card works uh, so for example you can set the limits of how how much money you want to spend with your ATM and you can just do it on the fly you can change it uh, we have a very nice uh, a statistics experience that we we cluster all the all the transaction based on where you have are spending the money uh, all the card transactions and then we give them in this nice uh, illustrated view where people can see okay this much I spend uh, this much money in a bar or food or transportation or, or vacation uh, we can really cluster it so this was the most basic version of the app which has been live for the past uh, almost two years uh, and now two years later where are we? We have managed to launch different banking products as you might find with any other traditional bank. But uh, a challenge for us has been because we are a mobile experience. We are totally inside the phone uh, of, of, of the user. So we cannot just copy an experience of how it works in the other banks and recreate it amongst ourselves. We, we really have to rethink every financial product from ground up. Uh, We've uh, launched a couple of uh, MasterCard, so MasterCard and the Maestro card, it's, it's, a, it's a different card product which is very widely accepted in, in Germany and in the Netherlands, so people really like that. Uh, earlier, early last year, uh, no, I think late last year, uh, we launched another product which was on the premium category which came with uh, additional health insurance and travel insurance which was positioned for the people who were traveling a lot. So this is our black.
<laughs> uh, so it's our uh, black mastercard which we lost in december of last year it comes with an alliance uh, insurance package that if you're traveling abroad so a lot of people who, who use our product for traveling uh, if they lose their mobile phone or if something happens to them abroad it's covered in this uh, in, in this insurance package uh, and and that's also one of our uh, most successful products that we've launched uh, so this is uh, our card product lineup as of now that that is live right now and then we have able to launch a different financial products as well. So you, you think of a bank and then you think of different financial products of I want to be able to take out a loan to buy, to buy a home or buy a car or I want to save money and for, for, for buying a home in the future. Uh, or I need to create an investment portfolio or uh, I need to have my, uh, my insurances in place. So thinking that and keeping that in mind, we've uh, managed to launch different financial products uh, and I'll walk through them one by one. So we have uh, our first product that we launched was called N26 Invest. Uh, so it's, uh, this is how the experience looks like. A very minimal, very basic that people can create an investment portfolio, choose uh, the amount of money that they want to deposit uh, in, in, that, in that investment portfolio and uh, what kind of plans would they like. So we offer three different risk portfolios that people can choose from, uh, see how much uh, the, the return might be in a 10 year time frame and uh, boom then you're on that's uh, pretty much it so you confirm you see assign the terms and conditions uh, and that's pretty much it so in like a couple of taps you can set up an investment portfolio right in the product itself so this is also requires to to rethink the experience that how do we create trust with the users how do we uh, manage to uh, show what is the most important information because it's an investment product so it involves certain amount of risk as well and we have to communicate that uh, to, the, to the customer as well. So how do we do that? How do we navigate through those experiences just digitally because we, we, we don't have another human being that they can talk to for this. Uh, so everything has to be done in the in-app experience. <coughs> then uh, a couple of months ago we launched our savings product. It's a fi fixed term savings product where people can uh, save money, get an interest rate and then log the money for a certain amount of time for, uh, for, for their uh, whatever future, whatever they want to do in the future. Uh, so when we have a product like this, uh, we really went back to the drawing board and had to rethink the product. Okay, if somebody has to create a fixed term savings account, why do they do that? Like, what are the questions going on in the user's mind or in the customer's mind? Uh, and we really wrote, wrote those questions down and tried to understand that what people are trying to do and mostly people are trying to save money for something in the future. Like they either might want to buy a car or they might want to uh, save money for the families or for a vacation or buying a home or whatever. It's mostly or even for some emergency situations. So everything is around something that might happen or they would like to do in the future. So we really crafted a story around this, around, around people's needs and uh, came up with the concept of N26 savings where it's basically you can send money to your future self. And we said, okay, you lock money in, your, in a capsule and it comes back to you after six months, one year, two years, five years, whatever, th whatever the time period is. Uh, and that's how we pitch the product. That's how we tell the story of the product. Uh, we, we literally used this capsule uh, as, as the icon of the, of the product. Uh, this is how the experience of the product looks like. So we, we, we start with a, with a small video and then we say, hey, you send money to your future self and then you can choose which bank do you want to save money with, what is the interest rate you're getting uh, and for how long do you want to save the money for. So a minimum is six months, goes up to five years. Uh, and then obviously the deposit guarantee by the EU and that's, that's pretty much it. So in a couple of clicks you can uh, set up a savings account uh, and we are adding partner banks on a, like, uh, on a regular basis. We have a lot of banking organizations all from all across Europe with whom you can save money. So we give complete control in the customer's hand. They, they are able to choose the, the time period. They are able to choose the partner bank, uh, whatever interest rate that they like. When do they want to take out the money? It's completely transparent. It's open and uh, people really like it right now. Uh, then comes our newest product, N26 Insurance. This was a 
interesting product that I also worked on uh, briefly uh, very recently as well. Uh, this is uh, this was launched one month ago. Uh, so the idea was uh, going forward that when we were launching these products, we also realized that N26 is a like even just our app. People are logging into our app six seven times a week, like. I'm not sure how many other apps, apart from your messaging camera or your basic apps. Uh, N26, uh, the, our banking app is the one of the most used app on our uh, customers' phones. They keep it on the home screen, they use it on a daily basis. They, sometimes they just log in, they don't do anything and they just exit like, because, I don't know, they like to do that, have a control of their finances. So we have these data points and we understood that maybe going forward, Sort of, we as, as a company should be present everywhere a person is trying to make a financial decision or, or become the center of their financial life. So being a part of their financial life, that includes every other types of finances that they also do. So in Germany, for example, people have a lot of insurances. They have a health insurance, they have a private liability insurance, insurances for their cars. People even have insurances for the dogs. Uh, so, and, and they pay money for those insurances monthly or yearly or whatever. Uh, and then that's also part of their finances, but people don't equate insurances with banks since we said, okay, if we are a part of their financial life, how can we include that in the banking experience as well? And uh, we came up with this product in 26 insurance, which acts as your wallet, where people can digitalize all their insurances in just a couple of clicks and uh, have a complete overview of what is happening because Insurance is the most boring industry ever, I think. Like you, 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 you have these insurance documents somewhere in your cupboard and something goes wrong, you have to find uh, where the paper is, what the policy number is, who do you call when something, go, when, when something, something happens. And we just take all of that uh, and we digitalize this completely for the customer. So this is how it works completely paperless. Uh, no legwork done by the customer. The, uh, the, the user does not have to do anything. It's literally like this simple, you just choose which insurance category do you belong to and you choose the insurance provider and that's pretty much it. Like literally the product is two clicks, you, you click it and then we do all the legwork and then we get the information from their insurance provider back to, the, back to our platform and then we show it. And going forward in the future we will be able to optimize it that if a person is spending let's say 100 euros on, uh, on, on an insurance for their, for their electronics, we can propose and optimize that and say hey maybe you can uh, use XYZ insurance for 50 euros less or something like that. Because we just have the data and we can optimize it for the customer's interest. Uh, and all of this and uh, one, one thing very important factor here is everything is built on a single layer of technology architecture so we don't have dependencies on, on legacy systems that, uh, that slow us down. So we are able to iterate and ship products much, much faster than any of the incumbent banks. Uh, and that's also our strategy going forward that how do we launch products. We just launch something, we learn uh, how the customers respond to it uh, and then we sort of do it all over again. Uh, one of our other one of the most successful products that we have is uh, N26 Credit, where uh, we've made it extremely frictionless and easy for people to take a loan. So people, if somebody wants to take a loan uh, for buying a home or uh, for, for buying a car, for example, uh, we've just made it very, very easy uh, in-app experience to, uh, to take, the, take the loan. And this is how that experience looks like. So you basically say, how much loan do you want? And then, uh, you choose that, what are you taking the loan for? So if you're taking a loan for, I don't know, vacation or for buying electronics or uh, any, any other purpose that uh, you would like, uh, you can, you can uh, take a loan for that. Yeah, and then we try to capture some information from the user, like what's their background, because we do extensive background checks as well. Uh, uh, in here, uh, I'm assuming in London, you must have something called a credit history. In Germany, we have something called the Schufa. So we check the customer's Schufa score, uh, which is basically a, a score for their credit history, that how, how, how the credit history looks like from the past, and then we can actually make them an offer uh, for the loan. Uh, and then we just uh, take more basic information from, from, from the user. Uh, and this is, by the way, just like happening uh, inside the app. There's no, no hidden interface or interaction behind it. This is literally how the product works. Uh, <coughs> 
So all these uh, all this information helps us to calculate much better and propose a good offer for the for the user. Like what could be the interest rate? How long can we give the give the loan for? Uh, and uh, and then we can just really do it really really fast because our systems are extremely sophisticated. So this is how. Uh, it looks like, and then obviously some terms and conditions. And uh, when this is the moment where we uh, review uh, the data given to us, and then just 15 minutes later, uh, our customers see this that the money shows up in their bank account. <coughs> and uh, it's it's extremely fast. This is one of the one of the most used pr uh, products right now. It's only live in Germany. We'll be slowly expanding in different markets, uh, but for now it's only Germany. Uh, but it's uh, people really like this product. Uh, and how we've managed to come up with this. Uh, any questions till now, or is it too fast? Yeah, please. Yeah. So just trying to understand because on the um, savings account product you put up a few minutes ago, right. it looked like you were fronting for other banks. Yes. In the credit product, are you actually lending from your own balance sheet? And how do you differentiate what's a front end application for other banks right. versus what is your own balance sheet? Yeah. So, uh, it's a good question. So, uh, for, for the savings account, uh, we have to buy by the German regulation and the German law. We need to have a certain amount of money in our own bank to be able to do that. Uh, we have not co crossed that threshold yet. So, that's that's why we uh, partner with different banks to be able to store uh, and uh, store con uh, people's money and then give them interest rate. Uh, in case of the credit, we can do it from our own bank. So this is actually our product that we are we are the ones uh, who are giving out uh, loans to people from our own banking organization. So we have a risk scoring model, uh, which we are improving every day based on whatever data we can get and uh, giving out money. But in this case as well, very recently we've partnered with another, uh, with another partner bank uh, or, or an organization called Ox Money, where we can we are able to expand how how the, the customer base to which we can give uh, give out loans to, uh, because. Right now, our risk scoring model is not that sophisticated yet because we just don't have that much data points uh, compared to other banking organizations. So we need that help from from other people. Uh, yeah. So depending on which product it is, we see if the partner out works or if we can completely build it in house. And we've tried both, and both are both has its own pros and cons. But overall, uh, towards the user, we are always the front end. The user only sees our experience. We completely 100% control that experience. Can you talk a little bit about the experience of trying to integrate a modern front-end application like we're demonstrating with older, legacy, less advanced European banks? Right. How, how have you guys been able to do that? How do we integrate with them? Oh. <laughs> So we make a list of potential partners, and then we strike off like 95% of them because just we they probably don't have an open API, or we cannot connect with their systems. It just does not work. So we are very. It's not that we're trying to be very selective with the partners. We are. We just happen to be because our uh, like our stack is so sophisticated that these we cannot connect with these old school organizations. So sometimes, so in Germany, if you do a wire transfer, the money shows up in your. So for example, I'm sending you money. The money will show up in your account two days later. I never understood why that happens. It's purely a legacy problem because Deutsche Bank or all these old banks, their, 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 their systems are so old school, they, they cannot do that. We can do it instantly. But somehow, if, for example, I'm sending you money in a different account, it will still not show up because the systems don't connect behind the scenes. So that experience still, and these, these are the uh, systems that we don't control, so we don't have that much influence on them. But what is also happening is because we've kind of set a market standard and an expectation from the consumer side that this is what is possible. And now there are other banks who are catching up. Uh, I know this for sure <laughs> that Deutsche Bank set up a 400 person team in Frankfurt called the Digital Factory, and they're sort of recreating what, what we are doing with N26. Any, you had, yeah. How do you deal with the user experience of terms and conditions in small print, which is really important for people to read, but everybody hates them? Right. How do you deliver a really good experience while they fully understand what they're letting themselves mm -hmm. in for? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if you saw this. Actually, there was a terms and conditions screen that we we just show all the information over there to the user, and if they want, uh, they can they, they can read it, or we can send them to to them via email. So all the fine print stuff is very transparent. It's very visible in the app. So after end of every product, they have to select and they have to accept terms and conditions. So for example, here 
uh, I'm not sure if I can fast forward the video, but uh, at the end of this credit product, there was uh, a terms and conditions section where people have to click those check boxes uh, to be able to move forward. So we just make it very, very transparent and people do actually read about it and then we sometimes we get feedback that it's, it's, it's too much. Then that's when we start, okay, we can also send them to them by email and they can read it at a later point when they, when they have time. So that's one thing which we cannot get rid of. So we just try to make it better by making it transparent. Yes. How do you understand what your customer actually wants? So you mentioned about MasterCard feature, you right? A lot, a lot of products. What's the process? <coughs> How do we understand that? Yeah. Well, I mean, we all have banks, right? I'm sure everyone over here has a bank and like, why should I call somebody at two o'clock at night when I'm in Bali and I lost my card? I, I don't want to call anyone. Yeah. Uh, I that, think that there are millions of features that you can use. Yeah, I mean, I think... I choose 10 and not millions. Right, so at least every bank should have a very basic minimum set of features which should just make the experience of operating your financial life much easier and frictionless. I think that should be the uh, like at the very basic. We can go in details of how how much loan do you want, what are the interest rates, how does the investment portfolio looks like, these sort of more sophisticated things at a later point. But at the most basic stuff is kind of common, at least at least in the European market that I've seen, and I'm sure it's also applicable here and in other countries as well. Uh, it's it's very basic. Until now, that's what we have been doing. We're covering the basic needs. Uh, with these more sophisticated that, uh, products that we've launched, these are version ones of all of these. So it's version one of invest, version one of credit, savings, insurance. Uh, depending on how they respond in the market, how people respond to it, uh, how what the acceptance is like. And all of these products are relatively new, so we don't have enough data points to make uh, a, a very informed decision on what the version 4 should be like. So we, we up, go up to version 3 and we start launching step by step until version 1, 2 and 3. And then how to iterate the product from that point onwards, it will come at a later point. Uh, and stuff like this, it, this, this hasn't been figured out. Nobody in the world has figured this stuff out. So it's, it's, it's a lot of trial and error. Uh, uh, going into more specifics to your question, we do set up Sometimes uh, user studies uh, all across Europe so send out surveys on type form. We do qualitative research where we call customers in-house, design uh, the product with them, show them prototypes, uh, change things on the fly depending on what the feedback is like. But that is like really re has been limited until now. It's not happening at a big scale because we're live in uh, 17 European countries, and if we do this, we can only do it in Berlin because that's where our headquarters is. Yes. Can I open an? Uh, uh with you guys in the UK? Not yet. Okay. No. Yeah, we are, it's it's European only right now. Yeah. I mean, for, for us to operate in the UK, we would require a banking license from the Bank of England or whatever the legal structure would be like. Uh, so yeah, not yet, but so only, only in the future. If if you're living in in anywhere in Europe in any of the uh, core markets that we operate in, then you can open an account. But you need a, a European address where we ship the card to and where you do your verification process. Can you talk about how people make it secure and was also mentioned like uh, AWS, how can you store the data? I just wonder because I think banking regulator have a very high standard on what if this bank fraction, what if this app fraction, how safe are they? So I think that's a two-part question. How do we do the security part and what happens if the app crashes or if the company crashes? <laughs> I mean, the, the, when the app crashes, I mean, it depends on how stable our app environment is, like how good the engineering behind the app is. So that's, that's purely a tech question, uh, depending on how good the engineering team has written the code and then the app experience is stable, it does not crash, which right now, I mean, six months ago it used to crash a lot, but not anymore, it's very, very stable. Uh, on the other hand, on, on the security side, yes, you're right, we have a lot of, uh, so everything that we do over here is extremely regulated from the, at least from the, from, the, from the German government. So we have to communicate with them very, very often at many steps in our our software development product development process that uh, where we are we have to send them wireframes we have to send them screenshots and they kind of have to approve sometimes of of uh, what experiences we can or we cannot do it uh, so for example the investment product that i showed you earlier 
uh, we so the the investment portfolios that you invest in we call them invest 40 60 and 80 like this is the name of the investment portfolios based on how much risk you a customer is willing to take uh, six months ago we used to call them bold uh, easy or something like that we had different language for it and basically the German government came down on us saying that bold is a personality type you, 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 cannot, you cannot call this uh, investment plan bold because a customer who thinks he's bold, they might put money in it and they might lose all the money. And, and that also, in their regulation stuff, it comes into financial advisory and we don't have a financial advisory license. So there is a very strict boundary of what we can do and cannot do. And that, that's our sandbox that we play in. But even within that sandbox, we can get creative and do things like this. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 nothing. We, we have a very, like, a 10 person security team purely in house. Uh, e even our office, like, one funny story we have at least one or two people a week who show up at our office saying we want to open a bank account. Uh, and then we, we can't even let them inside the office because it's not allowed. Uh, like, the banking regulation is so strict that it's, uh, we, we cannot let them anywhere near our computer systems or leave laptops open around it. So our internal security team is very, very strict of how, who's inside the office, uh, uh, how, how we deal with uh, even our computer systems or whatever. So do you stand with those people on the sidewalk outside your office and show them how to open up the bank? Yeah, we do that actually, yeah. yeah. We stand in the, st stand in the stairwell, we, we walk them down through the elevator, offer them water and say, hey, this is how you can actually do it. And I w personally, I was very surprised by this when I showed up at the company that people, like groups of three standing outside the office, say, I want to open a bank account. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's help you out there. <laughs> uh, can I ask you something? It's about the product. Uh, do you have developers in different countries, or is it centralized in no. Germany? Those no, it's 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 right now. We have a 200 plus uh, person team. Uh, everyone is in Berlin right now. Uh, that includes all the product design engineering teams and including customer support staff. So everything we're a Berlin-based startup, uh, and we operate purely out of Berlin right now. So no, we don't work with external people. And that's also another regulation thing that our company has a policy. We can't really work with freelancers or outside support. So everything that is happening is happening in-house. Yes? Uh, do you think that Deutsche Bank is actually going to uh, be able to replicate this experience? They've tried to. Uh, there, there, <laughs> uh, there is an app, a second version. So Deutsche Bank has three or four apps in the App Store right now. And I never know which one to use. Uh, the one I showed that was actually the one I was using. Uh, and I had memorized the flow because my German is practically non-existent. So I memorized the flow of how to transfer my rent. And at one point, they changed the UI. And I, I still don't know where that money is. Uh, but they did try to replicate this experience by launching another app. And they call it something else. Uh, and even the, the, the statistics screen that we showed, they completely copied it. But even there, like, the experience doesn't cut it. <laughs> <laughs> but they're trying really hard, which is, which is healthy. Yeah. It's important that this needs to happen because they just have such a vast customer base and they deserve a nice experience. So you're not nervous about them with their 400 person team? No, I, I think uh, if, I mean, if the question is, are we competing with Deutsche Bank? The answer is no, we cannot compete with Deutsche Bank. Mm -hmm. It's too vast of an organization, too many dependencies, like they operate at a different scale. But there is a certain segment of consumers of that bank who probably don't need to go to a bank teller to open a bank account. Like for example, if I move from, from India to Germany to work there, I don't want to go to the bank account and deal with people over there. Like why should I? I should just be able to do it online. And, and that group of customers is extremely big right now. So at the current place we have 400,000 plus customers in like different European markets, which a lot of people <laughs> don't want, not wanting to use Deutsche Bank. <laughs> yes. Normally, the interface is really tricky when it's foreigners. Identify IDs from the local, from, let's say, from the German ones, it's much easier than identify IDs from uh, other nationalities. Let's say, for example, sometimes in Europe, you have to work with the ID from Spain or the ID from right. France or the ID. How works the part? Yeah, so uh, that's, that's a good question. So right now the verification process of handling the IDs is one of the biggest bottlenecks that we have. 
in the customer being able to sign up for the for the account so right now how people sign up we have a sign up form completely online they reach the verification step and at that moment they do a video call with a customer support agent who verifies their ident identity uh, and that's the moment where we are limited that certain number of passports can be accepted and for example if somebody is from a country in Southeast Asia where we don't recognize the passport or the, or, the, or the customer agent does not recognize the passport, they will reject them and they cannot do, they cannot sign up. And uh, right now we're working on solutions on how do we increase the acceptance of IDs. And also it depends on different countries. So in, in Germany it's very, very, very strict that you have to have a video call. But in Netherlands, for example, you can just take a photograph of the document, send it, and that's already enough for them. In Italy they require two different documents. In France they require two different documents, a, a residence proof and a photo ID proof. So it's also localized like different countries have different uh, verification laws and we have to cater to all of them and that's what we're working on right now. Do you, do you have like a call center or is it purely online where you message uh, no, we have a we have customer support department. It's right now it's, it's one of the biggest departments of the company. It's 120 plus people, but it's all in, uh, employed by us totally in house. Uh, we build the software, we build uh, everything for them in house. Yeah. And uh, there's also a, a part of the German regulation that however many languages you are operating in, you need to have customer support in those languages. So right now we localize in five languages and we need, we need to have customer support in those five languages. Uh, it almost looks like uh, with the additional products you add, you are starting to move into the price comparison zone uh, with various insurance policies that perhaps might be better for each of your customers. Mm -hmm. Do you see that being where the kind of growth trajectory lies for the business, or do you see it more as a geographical get into more countries? For the company or for the customer? Yeah, for the company. Uh, I, I don't think it's the price comparison trajectory. It's about being the hub where people are doing their finances. So it, it, uh, like N26 will become, or we are hoping that working towards becoming the touch point where people are doing the next financial transaction. Uh, and that includes, so insurance right now is just a wallet. It's, it's basically an insurance wallet where people in Germany have a lot of insurances, they add it and they have an overview, oh, I'm spending 500 euros a year on my insurances. And we can suggest that you can do this in 350. So, so it, we don't... Seeing various products, trying to hook them into... No, not really, like, it's not really a selling platform. It's more about optimizing and to have a better customer experience. I like very much the uh, report, the chart, the donut chart, uh, showing uh, everything I spent. Uh, and if I was traveling the, the one, or in a few of the 17 European countries, will uh, the currency conversion reflect that? Yes. Yeah, so we do show if you, for example, if I've come here and I pay with my master N26 MasterCard, uh, it will show that you paid in pounds and what is the FX markup. And uh, it's got pretty good rates. And we also have, uh, you all must have heard of this company called TransferWise. In, in London, we have TransferWise integration built right in. So if you want to transfer money, it goes through actually a TransferWise network and you get the rates on TransferWise. Yeah. Do you have any information about the demographic of your customers? As it young, tend to be younger people who are yeah. interested in this kind of experience? Yes, like oh, if we say in terms of an age group, it's almost going from 18 to 35. That's the, the rough demographic that we deal with. So a lot of students, a lot of young professionals, people who travel a lot. Uh, they are our main customer base right now. But when we start launching these big products, uh, like like taking out a loan, so we're also starting getting people, like little bit, uh, people with families who want to take out a loan for their family or for buying a home or buying a car as well. So it's really depending on what kind of product we launch and whose needs are we serving. Yes? It seems to still be a problem for a lot of banks to offer digital joint accounts. Is that something that you're looking at? Yes, <laughs> so that's the most requested feature from our customer base right now that we want to be able to open a, a bank account with my partner, husband, wife, uh, friends, whatever. Uh, uh, so we are working on that right now. Uh, but again, sort of it goes back to this question that we, so there is a certain idea in people's head that what it means to have a joint account or a shared account or a sub account. Uh, we are again taking a different approach to it that what people actually want to do with it and not just what is offered right now in the market. So we really have to rethink it from the ground. So does it need to have two IBAN numbers? Do we issue two different MasterCards or can we just do it with the same one and just have an overview inside the app? So it will require us to 
rethink the everything again from scratch, and that's what we are currently working. Yeah. What would motivate you to come into London as well? Oh, the, uh, how easy is it to get a banking license from the Bank of England? <laughs> <laughs> so there's no passporting of the license you have in Germany, here. I'm not aware of the legal side, but I'm assuming that it's not. That's why we are not here yet. <laughs> Sorry? Do you have plans to add support for cryptocurrencies? For cryptocurrencies? Yeah. Uh, not yet, actually. Right now, our focus is purely on, on even different, we don't even support different currencies right now. So being able to do a transaction in, U, uh, in US dollars or pounds, for example. So we are really focused on that. Um, every time you take a new product, like savings or loans, what is the design process and the creative process for the interface that you think goes through? Yeah, so uh, it involves a lot of prototyping. So if we have an idea, we start with wireframing, wire, with, with sketching out different things. We just lay out everything, what, what ideas do we have. It's almost like a brain dump. Uh, and then we just put everything on paper and, and different software and see how an experience might look like. And then we show it to people, like show it to a lot of people and see, hey, is this what you're looking for? Is this solving a problem for you? It's really about asking the right questions to the, to the user uh, and see if we are creating something which is actually worth some, something to somebody. Uh, so we go through many cycles and many iterations and rounds of this sort of user testing and, and co-creation with people uh, till the time we come to this final interface that is actually launched. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very back and forth process that you start from, start something, you reach a certain point and then nobody likes it. And then sort of you throw away everything and you start from scratch again. It depends on product to product. So, for example, uh, the insurance product was started. We started developing this uh, January, February this year, and we launched it last month. Uh, but some of uh, the design work and the concept work was done a couple of months ago, even in 2016. So, it really depends uh, if we keep the development time go anywhere between three to six months. Yes. Do you think one size fits all approach? for every country that you're operating in, is that a good solution? Or what are the challenges that you'd like to address for different cultures? Right, yeah, so that's a, that's a very good question. We think about that all the time. Uh, I, that's why what I earlier said, that there is a basic set of needs that is common in a lot of countries. Uh, so that's what we're going for. That helped us get to this place. Like we got to 400,000 people in all these markets because we address those different needs. But when it comes down to different sophisticated products like an investment or taking out a loan or having an insurance, that's where a certain amount of localization would be required. Uh, and we will slowly start entering those uh, spaces and really understanding those markets much more deeply and carefully uh, once we grow. Right now, the market that we understand the best is, is Germany and Austria because that's how the company started. Uh, we, we understand the regulation stuff because when dealing with banking, it's not just us, it's, it's the regulation environment as well. Uh, how do we how do we deal with them when we, we launch a savings product in, in France, for example, or, or uh, Spain, for example. So it's, it's two things. Uh, first, really understanding those markets individually and being able to create a product for them or optimizing a current product for those markets and understanding the regulation there. It's two, two different aspects which go together. Yes? And has this data enabled you to, to see if different markets have different relationships to money? Oh yes, totally, yeah. So we, we, we make these visualizations where we say, oh, people in, in, in France, for example, they, they love the black card and they make a lot of transactions with the black card, but not so much with the MasterCard. Uh, and then we have uh, different markets where people are doing a lot of ATM withdrawals. That means they're using more cash much more heavily. And then we can understand, see, uh, like, uh, what are the most, most uh, used, like, what are the most transactions happening at what kind of a merchant uh, at airports, for example. So we can have these clusters, which helps us increase, increase, uh, improve our model, where we can cluster the transactions also uh, so we're getting like better day by day because we have all this information uh, and then slowly we can also optimize different products and introduce products based on that information yes do you have one um, like analytics or data science team doing everything and you sort of <coughs> ship them out or do you have a team for like understanding user behavior a team for risk um, like understanding credit risk and stuff like that how does that work 
So we, we have a data team which purely focuses on the data part. Uh, all the bank and the legal stuff is done by a bank. So actually N26 is two companies, it's the N26 group, so it involves the N26 uh, GmbH which is the, the like the limited liability corporation in, in Germany and the N26 bank, the two different organizations. And then we have a bank which does all the bank related stuff with the legal department which is sort of separate. <laughs> we sit in the same office, but they do their own thing. And then we have individual feature teams, cross-functional feature teams with their own designers, developers, backend engineers, which is savings, investment, uh, credit, uh, growth, for example. So does that answer your question? Or? Yeah, I think so. So it's, it's, uh, we, we do have different teams working on different but stuff. Do you have analysts on each of those teams, each of the feature teams? Or do you have like oh. a central team of analysts that are yeah. data people? Yeah, so for now we have a central team, uh, a, a data team which is approximately seven or eight people, uh, and then we connect with them uh, on a weekly basis on whatever information we need. Uh, but I think going forward we would have people in all of those teams because of that will become a must once we move forward uh, and we have more information on each of those products itself. Do you have international designers for the designers? I'm from India. <laughs> <laughs> No, no uh, we, we, we didn't think like that. Uh, so we just have a group of designers and they happen to be internationally, even I think in the entire company. Actually, that, that was supposed to be my next slide. I'm, I'm kind of afraid if the volume will work. Should I play the video? <laughs> Let's try. It works. <laughs> That's pretty much it from my side. And happy to take more questions actually. Thank you.